Sinusitis is a term that describes inflammation in the sinuses, as simple as that. Now this can be acute, this can be chronic. If it is chronic, we have two major um, subgroups. Sinusitis can be acute, a common cold can lead to acute sinusitis, or can be chronic over years and decades. And the chronic forms are differentiated into those with and those without nasal polyps. Each of these diseases has its own pattern of symptoms, its own inflammation behind, its own remodeling, which means uh, changes in the mucosa, and its own treatment approaches. Headache is something that is really disturbing patients. We recently did a study where we looked at the impact of different symptoms on quality of life and headache was by far the most prominent. As I told you before, there are different forms of sinusitis, chronic rhinosinusitis, and the form without nasal polyps has by far more headache. And it could be something that bothers the patients over years, every day. They stand up in the morning with headache and they go to bed with headache. The question is, is it really sinus headache? And for that we do diagnostic uh, procedures like a CT scan. If it is sinus headache, we know to how to approach it. And normally what you do is you approach the sinuses, for example, by surgery, if medication doesn't help anymore. But we also have to see that other forms of headache, coming from the eyes, coming from the brain or neuronal structures, can cause very similar symptoms. So you have to make sure that you exclude other forms of headache before you do such surgery. Nasal polyps are an expression of inflammation in the sinuses, which result in the outgrowth of the sinus mucosa into the nose, blocking the nose, diminishing the smell, giving rise to secretions that run either anteriorly or possibly into the throat the whole day. These patients are really bothered by this disease also because they have other diseases with it. So it's very typical that patients with nasal polyps have also asthma with it. It's a disease that normally starts in the age of 30 to 40 years of age. It can be in younger people, it can be in much older people but it very seldomly is to see in children. And that's where um, the word polyps sometimes is misunderstood by adenoids. So it's not about something that grows behind the nose in children, polyps in, in the um, common language. It's really a disease of the sinuses and the nose in the adult subjects. Nasal polyp patients are very often also bothered by asthma. That means it's not just the upper airways, it's also the lower airways which take part in the same inflammation. Up to 60% of our patients with nasal polyp have asthma, which might be even severe asthma in some of these patients. So when we think about treatment strategies, we have to think about both airways in the same approach. As nasal polyps are a sort of inflammation, corticosteroids, or uh, as the people say, cortisone, helps. It should be local cortisone, local corticosteroids, because it's needed for many, many years, decades, and it should not lead to systemic side effects of this medication. So corticosteroids, topical sprays, sometimes drops, are the first choice. If that doesn't work and doesn't control the disease, then we can go to the next step of intervention, which mostly is surgery. Surgery can mean removal of polyps, but it should mean, especially in the first place, a total removal of the disease from the sinuses. We call that a FES surgery in different variations. And after that surgery, we still keep treating the patients with topical glucocorticosteroids. Because this is a chronic disease, even if under the treatment, but certainly without treatment, there is a chance of polyps recurring, can be after some years, can be after 10 years. So we need to consistently treat these patients. 
The question today is, what do we do with those who had surgery, had maybe two surgeries, and still the polyps recur, even with the topical or systemic even treatment? And these are the most difficult patients where we have in the future the possibility of interfering with so-called biologics. These are antibodies which hit specific targets in the inflammatory pathway of nasal polyps, such as interleukin-5, IgE, interleukin-4, and others. And what we have seen from the studies so far is that this will give a lot of hope to those patients with the most severe disease of the upper and of the lower airways.